Wilson against junior Mark Fox of Urbandale. Neither one of those wrestlers has lost more than one match this year. They're each once beat. Jeff Jens has jumped out to a two to one lead with a takedown. And then with Chad Turns' escape, it makes it two to one. Jens, 37 and 0, last year's Turn state champion guy, guy. at 152 pounds. The same weight class Jeff Jens won last year. Jens is in the, in the black uniform. You see him on the left. Chad Turn is the, in the, well, familiar to you, maroon uniform of Mount Vernon. You know, Tim Johnson, uh, coach at Mount Vernon. Well, Some years ago, and Coach Bill Thompson is excited about having Chad turn in the finals because this young man has come a long ways, and it personally from uh, just uh, not even being a full-time wrestler as a freshman and a sophomore. Last year was his first full year on the team, and so Coach Thompson said he's come a long ways, and he's feeling a lot of sa satisfaction having Chad in the finals. Same way, green down. He's down four to one right now, though, with 36 seconds to go in the first period. Jeff Jens is a real physical wrestler, as is Chad Turn. You saw the capabilities on the feet of Jeff Jens on why he is a defending state champion. These two have met in the uh, team duel last year. They met and they had a good match with Jens winning it. Coach Bob Dyer from Glenwood was last year's coach of the year when they won the Class 2A state championship. Jens of Glenwood leads four to one. As I said, each of them had to win in overtime in the semifinals to be here. There's Bob Dyer with his hand in it on his face right there saying, golly, I wish it was over and Jens was a uh, winner. But I wish he were coming back next year. Yeah, <laughs> all kinds of things going through his mind. Well, you never know. He might be thinking, what am I going to have to eat after the match? Four to one in favor of Jeff Jens. Choice three. At the end of the first period. Fur to red. Jens has his choice. Green to fur. Red down. And red? Jens wants to start under. He's, uh, he's leading by three. Second period. Chad Four Turn. Four it's one, it's spelled T-H, but uh, pronounced no, Turn, green. like T-U-R-N. Didn't side. take Jens long, did it? He's out in the up middle, by four Working now, in the five to one. He looks a little more oh. physical, a little stronger, and, he's, and he was in on a nice double. Jeff Jens shoots in on a nice double, and he wants to play takedown. Seven to two. See the clock ticking up there. Now he jumps in, hooks Watch the leg. The face. Watch the face. Jeff Jens did, comes through to the other far leg right there. Not able to execute through yet. There he drives through and it's looking close to two points. And he has it nine to two. Jim Christensen of Greenfield, the referee, calls the fourth takedown for Jeff Jens. He'll probably turn him loose again. Down easy, Red. He did. 9-3. 152-pound class. The 1990 Wrestling Championships live from Veterans Auditorium in Des Moines on Iowa Public Television. There's a double attempt by Chad Turn, but the hip action by Jeff Jens is able to counter him and avoid the takedown. Interesting, he stepped in and just took what he had left, yeah. 11 to three. And 11 to four after the, after the, the let go. But Jens of Glenwood is showing dominance here against Chad Turn of Mount Vernon. Well, he's very solid, he's a rock, you know, as you can see right there, and he's established himself on his feet to the point where he feels very confident on his leg attack right there to where he can make moves like he just did and take a little risk. Now, here's the counter, and he's able to counter Chad Turn very well right there, pulls up the arms, does a nice job of countering, and you're right, he has shown some dominance here. 
end of the second period. 11-4, seven-point lead. And Turn has a choice. There's Coach Bill Thompson in his eighth year at Mount Vernon. Always has boys up here, and he's excited about Chad Turn's development, as I said. And probably like to see him turn it on a little bit here in the last period. He isn't as confident going underneath as Jens is. Jens was actually in the first, in the last period, going all the way under, even without using his arm. Just get under there and take something when he when he arrived. Let's get some offense, gentlemen. Outside signal. He'll try to brag. Turn back on the mat. Work. Oh, there, there. He slips. Almost the first mistake he made. Jens, that is. Coach Thompson encouraging Chad Turn to just keep going. There's a minute and a half left in the. Well, we've already all through. We've already seen it tonight. These matches can oh, be in a matter of oh. seconds. You're exactly right. Eleven to five. See what I mean? Jens is very confident out there. Feels very much in command. You know, we were talking about families and the lights and the Randalls being in company as far as having so many state championships. Mount Vernon and Lisbon are only a mile apart, Doug. Yes. And so you put those families, they might be the closest families. You put that, that's 11 state championships between the Randalls and the lights, and they only they grew up and lived within a mile of each other. Now that might be a record. If it isn't, it's above average. <laughs> 53 seconds to go. And turn went under, but Jen stopped him cold with those up with an underhook. Now he's gonna try to hook his man over to his back. And he did so. Boy, he is a horse. He, Jeff Jens was able to whip over Chad Turn there. And he's got a neck wrench and he's got the arm covered right there. 27 seconds to go. He has a three-point near fall. That was a five-point move. And if he can settle in, no, he can't pin him now. It's, yeah, we've got a great yeah, match on the 1A at 6-6 six to six on the 1A match at 152. Jimenez versus Johnson. Jimenez and Johnson. Johnson from Logan Magnolia. A familiar name in Logan Magnolia over the last 20-some years. And Jimenez, Liberty Center, Southeast Warren. 6-6 six to six with 52 seconds left. And it ends at double A, Matt, with the Jeff Jens winning impressively. Over Chad turned to Mount Vernon 16 to 5. Two-time state champion, Jeff Jens. Congratulations, Jeff, and Glenwood and Coach Bob Dyer. On Iowa Public Television, we're going to go to this 1-1. We're going to go to this 6-6 match at 1A between Randy Jimenez of Southeast Warren and Lynn Johnson of Logan Magnolia. The man who is getting some attention with the injury timeout was Jimenez. In the green uniform, Lynn Johnson is already out there. He has the white top and the purple second color. And Jimenez is in on a double leg right away, but he can't finish it. It's 48 seconds to go here. And the warning goes to Johnson for backing out to avoid the takedown. 6-6. Six, six. He pronounces it with the J, Jimenez. Well... So he doesn't know how to pronounce his own name. <laughs> That's what we're saying. We have to hope that. <laughs> anyway, Randy's in a good match here. He has 33 seconds to go between Lynn Johnson and Randy Jimenez. The Gibbonses are up on the mat. Well, as a matter of fact, those are all Iowa State. Three national champions there. Kelly Ward on the right. Jim Gibbons behind him. There's Perry Hummel and Joe Gibbons on the left. And be, how many uh, state championships between Jim and Joe? What was it? Seven? Yeah. I think you're right. Yep. Four for Joe. Three for Jim. 33 seconds to go, and they have timeout again for Randy Jimenez of Southeast Warren. 
He's had a great year, 28 and two. His coach is Ron Miller. Now Lynn Johnson waiting there patiently or impatiently as the case may be on the left is undefeated in 33 matches. From Logan Magnolia and away they go on the whistle. Jimenez takes the shot. The referees, Don Crandall from Oskaloosa. Six to six with about 20 seconds to go. 1A, 152. Kind of had the feeling somebody's going to score here, Doug. 15 seconds. They're going to score here, but it'll probably be in overtime. <laughs> well, it would appear that way right now with about one second to go. The official is Don Crandall of, o of Oskaloosa. He brings him back to the center and then blows his whistle and the gift to the end. We'll get some information to you about what happened also at the AAA match between Kittleson and Fox, which has just ended. We saw Jeff Jens defeat Chad Turn 16 to five for the 2A championship, Jens from Glenwood. And now Jimenez and Johnson will go into six to three in favor of Kittleson was the score at the AAA. Kittleson from Decorah, state champion for Leroy Capriva. Over Mark Fox of Urbandale. So they'll take this one minute rest and then they'll come back to wrestle a shorter match. One period, uh, three periods with one minute each. That's Jimenez of Southeast Warren. He went six to six with Lynn Johnson in the first match, in the first regulation. Those are the numbers of team championships. We said that West Waterloo has won more than any other team, 17 of them. Lisbon is right up there now. Fort Dodge, East Waterloo, and Cresco which hasn't always been Cresco Crestwood, but they've won a lot of titles. Since we've joined this match, Jimenez has shown a lot of aggressiveness, but Johnson has shown a lot of defensive ability. Now Johnson's Johnson. trying to post that arm and come around. But Jimenez is holding the head, see, he's got a hold of the head, keeping Johnson from spinning around. He was, he was able to keep him from spinning around for the two. And he got a faced off, and here he comes again with that shot. He takes him from way outside, though. He takes the shots, Johnson's posting ahead and trying to come around. We're almost at the end of the, uh, well, 22 seconds away from the end of the first period. Again in the overtime, if it settles into a tie, then you have criteria. Everybody's supposed to know ahead of time. Coach is supposed to have it in mind so he doesn't get fooled. Post in the head, that front. There he is. He's really trying to spin around, but Jimenez is doing a nice job of holding him. There's the two. There's the two for Johnson. Right at the right end, at of, the the end of the buzzer there. Johnson really was pushing, posting that head, spinning, spinning one way, spinning the other way. Persistence paid off. And so it's Johnson, two nothing in the overtime, eight to six all together. Now see him spinning right here, then he posts it again, spins again, has the hand on the crotch right there, posts the head, sees right on the head, drives across, has a hold of the leg, finally gets two right there at the buzzer. Jimenez countered him all the way, managed to stay face to face with him as long as possible, but couldn't stay there forever, and, and Johnson finally got behind him. Second period, Johnson starts on top. Jimenez got to pick where he wanted to go, and he went to the bottom. Jimenez trapped the leg when he went back that time. He's in a little better spot than he was the first time they made this move. But that didn't last long. 
So he's pulling that wrist through using kind of a arm right there, trying to drive it across, get Jimenez off his base as he's, he's successful doing right now. Now Jimenez back to his base. That's what keeps him from going to his back. But now he's off his base. Hips are down on the mat. That's the dangerous part. Don Crandall calls out a stalemate. There's only one second left in the second period. 152 pounds, 1A division. This is the last match going at this weight. And overtime. Now we have the last one minute to go, the last period. Eight to six. Lynn Johnson in charge. He's the man on the bottom. Jimenez has to make up two points. Trying to put on the cradle. The, the referee, Don Crandall, calls it potentially dangerous. <laughs> Knows he must score from the top here. Jimenez does. He knows he must score by putting Johnson on his back. He'd have to put him on his back for three, too, because two wouldn't be enough. Why well, would be two? Yes, near fall, a near fall is higher than the criteria. He would win right. by criteria if he gets a two-point near fall. But he has only a half a minute to do it. Although we don't know what happened in the regulation time. That's right. Right. It isn't like the collegiate where the, the uh, overtime is a completely different match. <laughs> Jimenez really trying to work Johnson here. Trying to get a make something with a bent leg Turk and he can't. That's considered by Don Crandall to be too dangerous. Eight seconds to go. right there a little bit too late the call on stalling for one point for Jimenez to make it an eight to seven victory for Lynn Johnson from Logan Magnolia he is the winner eight to seven in overtime and he finishes an undefeated season still had enough strength to almost set a state long jump record there into the arms of his coach Ken Kirsten we have the awards. The smile of a three-time champion. Let's go to Dick Trotter. All right, in 3A competition at 152 pounds, here you see Ryan Kittleson, the tactician from Decorah, who wins 6-3 over Mark Fox of Urbandale, and a mighty happy lad indeed. And right now, you see another mighty happy young man, Arlen Doc Severson, the coach of the Chickasaws from New Hampton. Arlen, how does it feel? Oh, great. I didn't think it ever happened. <laughs> well, here we are, coach of the year and two-way champions. What a way to go. Oh, it's just, just great. Been a long time. Did you have this goal in mind when you started the season? Well, we thought we could do it, but there, a lot of people didn't think we could, and they just been working at it all year. It's just been kind of a team goal. And to certainly do, with Spielman, to do everything. Spielman coming through the way he did tonight yeah, had to make spells. it feel mighty good. Yeah. Spells, right. Yeah. Okay, Arlen, thanks a lot, and best of luck to you in okay. your next match. Okay. Now back to you, Doug. Thank you, Dick Trotter. We're going back to the 2A mat, and we have an important case. You'll be declared the winner. Here are the awards at 152. Fourth place, Mike Meyer, Monona MFL. Third place, Chad Jensen, Orient Maxburg. Runner-up, Randy Jimenez, Liberty Center, Southeast Warren. A 1A 152-pound champion from Logan Magnolia, Lynn Johnson. at 152 pounds in a tough match an overtime match over Randy Jimenez now at 2A coach Bob Dyer of Glenwood 6th place Stacy Collier winner set 5th place Chad Kalkbed Esterville 4th 
place, Boyd Forsyth, Huxley Ballard. Third place, Steve Kelly, Britt West Hancock. Runner up, Chad Turn, Mount Vernon. And the 2A 152-pound champion from Glenwood, Jeff Jens. Jeff Jens is a two-time champion. And he won, as you can see, that's how many wins he had in a row. His last 77 in high school without a loss. So those are the 2A winners at 152. Here are the winners in the biggest schools, the 3As. Okay. 152-pound awards, Coach Leroy Capriva of Decorah. Sixth place, Jeff Lack, Mason City. Fifth place, Brian Bricker, Sioux City East. Fourth place, Sean Scarborough, Waterloo, Columbus. Third place, Ted Osterberger, Dubuque, Waller. Runner-up, Mark Fox, Urbandale. The 3A 152-pound champion from Decorah, Ryan Kittleson. Attaboy, Ryan. Let's go to Dick Trotter. <laughs> 